What's good, my G's? It's your boy Snow Ignorant Gamers in the house. How you doing? How you living? How you gaming? If you don't already know, G stands for gamers. Welcome, 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 welcome to the channel for the first time if you're here because of the headline. And if you subscribed already, do I even have to tell you? You already know what to do. Hashtag IGZ up all in the comment section. Look, we got a special video today, and I got Uncle Rizza. Uncle Rizza, you yep. already know. What is the deal, beautiful people? Today we are talking about the Xbox One Mobile, Xbox One M. I like that. Microsoft should <laughs> send me a check. The Xbox One M. <laughs> One M. <laughs> In order to really understand where we're going with this conversation, you have to be, uh, you have to have not lived under a rock, and you have to be True. paying attention to what Nintendo is doing because they're doing it again. And mm -hmm. by it, I'm talking Sony and Microsoft is fighting. And uh, Sony's obviously winning. Microsoft is holding on to the ledge at this point. And Nintendo is oh, sneaking yeah, up the back, the back hill like, <laughs> what's up? <laughs> like, they're doing it again, son. This, yep. this is what they did with the Wii U. No, the Wii. The original no, Wii. No, with the Wii. Yeah with their Wii. They're not scared of innovation. No, nah, and it, it's crazy. It's a formula that, I, I mean, whatever. I don't want to take it too far because this is not a Nintendo video. Fuck Nintendo. But this is definitely a formula that they've been running with lately. Um, yeah, I mean, it's still relevant to, to say what we got to say about them because yeah. this is the reason why their their success with the Switch is the reason why we're having this, this, this conversation. So They make the 1M coining. Yep. <laughs> A better opportunity to exist for real so to the people right what is your need for an xbox one m a switch type device like what is the problem that you're currently facing right now i'm gonna tell you what first of all uh i need forza i, I need forza mm -hmm. on the on the train the plane the motorcycle, the bathroom, like I don't, I don't care, I don't care. Uh, if these dudes get Mario <laughs> Kart, I want Forza. Uh, so there's that. Right. I'll take some Halo. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um. But ultimately, it comes down to no matter how much I obsess over the the hardware of the Switch and it's super dope, it's just not my preferred ecosystem. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I, I I want Xbox Live on this thing. I want to be able to join the party. And, 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 and bullshit with the dudes from wherever I am. I want to be able to play Halo. I I want my games. I want my right. games that I care about. I don't I don't care about uh, Mario, even though that game is wild crazy. Uh, for sure, fuck Zelda and Link, wh whoever whoever's who. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I just I just want to be in my I want to be at home in my ecosystem. Feel me? So right. So because Nintendo has proved the point that. They can do the home system and take it on the road and you're able to play full-blown titles such as mario kart such as poker poker stadium such as xenoblade chronicles 2 you know the the legend of zelda breath of the wild game etc 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 and on the playstation vita to a certain extent we've had a small taste of that there and the fact that xbox has yet to touch this market now it's becoming ever more apparent that since the Nintendo method of a full-blown system, not a portable system with full-blown games, it does make more sense for someone like you to get some of the games that you play within your ecosystem. Yeah, I mean, I, absolutely. And, and it seems right now it's a bit fragmented. I mean, you got the PC anywhere, right? So if you have a laptop, you could take that with you. But who's taking a laptop on the train? Right. And I think that's you know that's I mean? the craziness. Like, I have I have a Surface. My, my work laptop is a... Well, actually, I switched it out. I'm back to a, a regular laptop. But I, for a while, okay. I think for two years, I had a Surface. That was my work laptop. And uh, I could travel if I wanted to. I could travel with my Xbox controller and plug that thing in and get, get the popping. Like the right. the surface was good enough to play some of these you know these low level games on the the Microsoft uh, the Microsoft App Store and mm -hmm. well they call it market on a marketplace or market I think they just call it market but like Cuphead I could play Cuphead on my surface right. and this is this is why I always defended that play anywhere thing that Microsoft did 
Uh, not only could I play Cuphead on my Surface with my controller when I'm in a hotel in Mexico, but I can also mm -hmm. join the Xbox. I could join the Xbox Live lobby, and I. Right. It's essentially the same experience. Now I'll be wilding if I told you I could play Forza on my Surface, but if you get one right. of those gaming laptops, yo, you're already there. Right. Right now, and then again, joining a lobby with the Xbox Live crew in a party chat. They've just recently launched that into existence with the app. On the phones, yeah. And this is like, okay, right, on the phones. And those of us could speculate that's because of the crossplay with the um with the Nintendo Switch for Rocket League. You can you can you can guess that, Interesting, right? Interesting, yeah. So so it's it's a thing that okay, well, we got it on a laptop, we got it on crossplay, you know, for a, another console. Where's your mobile device? And you mentioned something to me off camera about that Windows is running ARM or is running on ARM devices. Can you explain to the people how that would benefit an Xbox player? So Windows, uh, this is, I think it was like a, a month and a half at this point. They were in Hawaii and they were with, uh, it's not NVIDIA. Who's these clowns that make the Snapdragon? Qualcomm. Qualcomm. Qualcomm invited everyone out and they debuted Windows 10 running on ARM processors. So two very important things about this. First of all, we're talking real ARM, press ARM processors like the Snapdragon 835, which is unless uh -huh. you have the new Galaxy S9, that Snapdragon 835 is probably the processor that you have on your Android phone right now. And it's also going to, uh, what we're talking about now is also going to work with the Snapdragon 845, which is the new, new processor. It just wasn't ready at the time, so they didn't debut it. So they're right. running on not specialized versions of this hardware. They're running on the hardware. And the parallel I make there is if you look at the Switch with the K1 processor, uh, it's an ARM processor, yes, but it's a special, it's a lot of, you know, like how Xbox and Sony take a GPU and they mold it and they push it and they do their thing. Sort of the right. same way uh, that that uh, the Switch is running on that K1 processor. Now, mm -hmm. the Windows 10 running on ARM is not a specialized version of ARM. It's just that plain Jane hardware. And the second thing about it is it's full blown Windows 10. This is not like a Windows RT from back in the day where um, it was a 60% functionally version of Windows and you couldn't run uh, x86, x64 uh, bit architecture applications. This is not that. This is not the Windows, the Windows 10S that was just debuted that was sort of a limited version of Windows depending on the hardware you get. Uh, this is not that. This is full-blown Windows 10 and all of its functionality running on an ARM processor. Now, would this and what would this help solve the problem of people feeling like they're missing out or left behind? In term, people. When you say people, who do you mean? So, like, say if you bought or you haven't bought an Xbox One, and you're looking for another way to take your purchase further. So, ah. so being able to run this technology on ARM, which will essentially be both just straight up Windows because we know that's what Microsoft wants inside the Xbox anyway, and then having a dedicated right. device that can actually run the Xbox stuff. So that it's like, hey, if you have this Xbox, this device is made for that and you still get Windows on the ARM technology and it makes it affordable so that no one is left behind or missing out. Yeah, I mean, that's essentially where we're going. Mm -hmm. That is that is essentially where we're going. But I, you know, I, I didn't really, that's a good point. I didn't really think about it from that angle in terms. I was thinking Microsoft likes to keep the Xbox ecosystem in its own world. Some would say Even a though, 360. Right, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Even though Windows, they changed the underlines of the Xbox One like twice. Right. You know, it had some it had some Windows Core in it. It had some Windows Code, and then they they just revamped it. Now it, it's a fully blown Windows 10 machine under there. Right. So I was for me, 
it's an opportunity for Microsoft to just straight up go and buy this ARM processor chip mm -hmm. and everything around it and just slap the Xbox right on there without having to do much of anything. Right. Right. Forget even, well, how do you, well, give them the Windows 10, but give them this specialized UI, kind of like how, you know, when you install Steam, mm -hmm. they've got that mode, that game mode. Right. That it opens full screen like its own console. Right. Forget even doing that, which that is something that they could also do, right? Mm -hmm. But just copy and paste your Xbox from whatever it is to whatever this Xbox One M would be. Right. That's what's really exciting to me. And the thing about the thing about when you look at when you look at the K1 processor, the K1 processor, which is what runs on the Switch, is a bit old. That Tegra, that Tegra chip's old. In fact, that's exactly what I'm running in my NVIDIA Shield. Right. So it's been a, it's been around for a while, right? It's not the most powerful thing. It's not the most power efficient thing. So running, running on, having Microsoft be able to run potentially this Xbox mobile thing on up to date brand spanking new ARM processors. Mm -hmm could solve a lot of the problems that, that Nintendo has introduced with a full-blown mobile console. Okay. Battery life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they could potentially get a better performance because these GPUs are a little stronger than what you see in the K1 world. So, of course, you know, a stronger GPU, better frame frame rate, all that good stuff. So that that's really you know when I saw the the Windows on ARM thing that was exactly what I thought and it just happened to be at the same point where the conversation about Nintendo repeating what they did with the Wii and how they they're starting to to slowly catch steam right it just happened it, it all aligned for me like oh shit you know maybe maybe this is the time that Microsoft should should really sort of dig in there mm -hmm. i mean yeah and if you if you think about the quick advantages that you would get instantly by them implementing this is one you can expand what you were trying to do with the smart app right because now the smart apps looks like a shell of what we do on the actual console but now you can just make it the console for this specific right. device two you get to take it out of your home you know what i mean uh, three, yep. it could also be the same portable device that can carry other entertainment pieces, such as, you know, the movies, the streaming services, um, you know, I, I'm not going to say DVD player or anything like that, but with the current Xbox, you can plug into the Xbox to watch content. So therefore you can have, you know, an external chip, an SD card or something to do the same thing while you're on the go yeah uh true even if you had to create a dock to give it that same docking power maybe it gives it a little bit more power like i suggested for the switch hey make a dock make a dock that gives it more stable uh you know rates yeah uh just just for whatever i mean i think about back to the sega saturn when you put that extra rom key cart in the back or the steel key cart in the back and even if the game wasn't designed for it it made the games run better so those would be like some quick advantages by even having, you know, the ARM technology in a mobile device such as such as that, and even to the point with the Qualcomm, if you get the price down, <laughs> uh, yeah, it'd be in attractive as well. And to your point earlier, it could probably produce something that'd be more, you know, more powerful than the Switch. Yeah, I mean, at this point, because it's not to say. I don't want to. I don't want to get into the the same conversation about Nintendo is just incapable of making a powerful console anymore. And by powerful, you know how people measure them up to Microsoft and Xbox every time. Right. But particularly with the Switch, it's about paying attention to your roadmap of games and your resources and what you need to run these games. Right. And then looking for architecture that can meet that. That's literally all it is. Yeah. I and at that time, they was locked into the K1. That's all it is. Right. I remember a while ago, former Xbox boss, uh, Robbie Bach, when I think they he was talking about in a podcast when they dropped the original OG Xbox, they had an opportunity. It was on the table to talk about 
having a mobile device a mobile device i think the code name was x boy and they sat down at the table and they discussed like yo here's this box we know who we going at we can't go at nintendo and sony at the same time they're two different companies the strategies won't work we need five things to take care of to make sure our xbox go the way that it needs to go nintendo and i'm still referencing the the, the podcast from robbie bach nintendo creates the game and then creates hardware around the game playstation right. is a engineer company so they create the console and then creates the game around it right so therefore no matter what happens and this is why nintendo has had a full phone grip on the portable market for so long they know that the content that's going into that they know what the game scales are and where it's going to be on they know they only have to create enough to get that out creativity creativity wise which is why today they can create something like the switch which came out wildly underpowered in terms of home console quote quote but still beats the crap out of any other mobile device if you want to play any game plus their library which is the game first creates that type of frenzy and it didn't right. make sense because one of the xbox biggest problems today if which is why people i say all the time you should own multiple content multiple consoles because you're missing out xbox has nothing that they can create back then one because of the resources not money resource but time resource of well what games can we create that could be mobile well now nintendo has a great problem they're not creating no games that have to be mobile they could just create games that are going to be both and then still have their ds alongside of it it's their market to win or lose for an xbox person to be a cut above servicing your community and still helping with the launch of your your rocky launch doing a device that can mimic something with the switch 2 at a low power mode or a low a low version of the game mode might actually be more helpful yep no that, that's thousand percent head on yeah thousand percent head on now do you believe that the xbox is i mean that the playstation is thinking of something else oh i think sony's coming again you think they come in with a, a vita 2 ah uh, dude as as a fan of the vita the switch is getting the praise the vita deserved i don't know how else to put that the only difference to me between the switch and the vita is for sony the switch was a side product and for nintendo i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> the the vita was a side product for, for sony a uh, product or a project and for nintendo the, the switch is make it or break it right that's the only difference to me and i'm not let's not get into comparing specs and the screen no, no, size no. that's not what we i'm talking time about for that, yeah I'm talking about, yo, these things run full-blown video gaming experiences. Like, son, my Switch, I had full-blown video games on there. Yep. And then there was the, there was the, uh, I'm going to coin this, you know, this is the thing I always say, the weird Sony shit that I don't play. Right. But to the Sony dudes, that was home. Right. So the Vita was in fact a real slice of the playstation experiment it if the the playstation experience is 100 i'd say the vita was like 70. i can go with that and that was amazing yeah. and they made all the right choices with the vita the thing ran android it had the second uh the second what you would call it thumbstick mm -hmm. so i i don't i don't understand why the switch is such a big deal and the Vita wasn't. But I think Sony's looking at that like word, word, and the clout that Sony has in this generation, the with the with the market share and the mind share that they command, and and with the various products like the the, the VR stuff that's doing very well. You know, people like to look at the numbers of the VRs like, no, look at the games that are still coming out to support it uh -huh. and look at how many hands it's in. 
I think I think that's a successful product at this point. With with those those things in mind, Sony could slide something through in another year or two. Right. Now you know what I mean. Now if they if they was to slide another one because they've had reports towards the I think the beginning of last year of 2017 that the future of another Vita was uncertain or no plans to do it. So if they were to do it and they were being dishonest about that just to not touch that, do you think that if they were to announce something that apply more pressure to Xbox to do something? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, you know what? In all honesty, no, because Microsoft, Microsoft is heading toward this experience anywhere world and they're like a thousand percent serious about it right so for all intents and purposes my pc is an xbox right i i think they're too far in that direction to be pressured into like whoa 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. let's get something mobile out right now you get what i'm saying mm -hmm. they they it, it could be a project for them sure they might do it yeah but i don't i don't think it's like they they're pressured into getting rid of the connect they're pressured into all the drm you know what i mean like if you guys don't fix this then your brand will die right i don't think this is one of those things hmm. i don't think it's one but something i want to say about the vita real quick sony does not have to try hard like i fully believe that they could rewrite the, the software on that thing from scratch uh -huh. and offer a PS4 experience on the Vita. Right. That's how dope the Vita is to me. Like, they could get the party chat on there in a whole nine. I feel like they could pull it off. Right. And then they could even just refresh the Vita 2.5. Here's the Vita. Ah, oh, we didn't promise you that we would make a new one because here's the Vita 2.5. Same hardware, just... It works with your PlayStation 4, and now you can play some of your PlayStation 4 games. Uh huh. I don't think they got to. I don't think Sony would have to try too hard to pull this off. Although I think they could still come up with something new and kill it. Right. The Nintendo Switch with real analog, real analog triggers at the back. That's all you got to do. That's it. That's done deal. That's true. Well, you've heard it. We're gonna wrap this video up right here. Ramon wants. Xbox One M, tag Microsoft, share this video with Microsoft, tell them we want an Xbox One M and we want credit for the name. Ramon wants credit for the name. We coined it. Tell my man, tell my man Phil to holler at me. Son. <laughs> if any of you guys got any suggestions, write it down in the comment section below and then share this video and we'll see which one of us gets it closer. And um, yeah, if you have any discussions, anything you want us to discuss or elaborate, yo, just holla at us you know where we at if you're new to the video if you're new to us subscribe if you already been here like and share the video every bit helps and we appreciate it uh your boy snow ignorant gamers and that's ramon yeah yay and we out of here peace peace